are so happy to be joining you tonight. Tonight we have a special segment that we have called Chosen Conversations. And we have gotten together some of our own high school students and young adults so that we can have some relevant and meaningful conversations surrounding the times that we're in and just a way to kind of encourage the young people and our youth that we miss so much. And so we hope that you enjoy it. We hope that everything is well wherever you are. We pray that you are blessed and healthy. Ike is going to let us know about what we're talking about tonight. What is our subject for this evening? All right, so the subject for this evening is... We're just talking. Real talk. It's real talk. So, uh, no, seriously, what we're talking about tonight is just issues that uh, young people are encountering. We're just going to really talk about a lot of the stuff that we're seeing on social media. This is an election year. COVID is happening. School situations are funny. And we just really want to give the youth an outlet to talk about how they're feeling and what they're dealing with right now, from the middle school kids to the high school kids to college to grown young adults. Uh, there's just so many things that are happening. And we just kind of want to really talk about it. And uh, maybe you have some things that you want to share. If you feel free to make a comment or two in the comment section. Uh, in section. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to hop right into it. All right, so before we begin with question number one, we just want to go around the room and get everybody's name, age, and what they're doing in life right now. Starting with young lady over here. Um, hello, my name is Natalie. I am 22 years old, and I am a preschool teacher. And hi, I'm Timmy, and I'm 15 years old, and I'm going to the 10th grade. Hi, my name is Tiana. I'm 16 years old, going to the 10th grade, running a business, and having my own job okay. with college. Oh, okay. 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 You better. Um, LJ, I'm 22 years old, and I'm a uh, machine operator in the aviation field. Hi, everyone. I'm Maya Miller. I'm a recent graduate from Spring Hill College. Whoop, whoop. And I'm a third grade teacher. Yay. Hi, my name is Taylor Carey. I'm 15, and I'm going to the 10th grade. All right, so let's get started tonight with question number one. How does God tell us to respond during the time of uncertainty versus what the world tells us during this time? Anybody? The floor is yours. Well, um, I know especially for me in this time, I've just been, you know, putting all my trust in him because God's timing is always the right timing. So I try not to, you know, stress about the little things and just turn them into positive things. Mm -hmm. so. so how does that uh, affect how you believe God versus what the world may tell you to do, how you have to activate your faith. Uh, in a time like this, uh, I think the, the world kind of compels us to switch over to this survival instinct to yeah. where it's, everything is about you and yours. Yeah. Uh, but the Bible and the Lord implements to uh, show compassion and love to one another, to love your neighbor more than yourself. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's not really showing God-like features to... You know, buy up all the toilet paper in the store, <laughs> or something of that nature, rather than sharing what you have with with the people around you. Okay, I like that. Anybody else? Thank you. I think also we have to realize that um, at the end of the day, we are still human. So give ourselves some grace. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we need to have faith in God. That's the number one thing. But give yourself grace when you do go out and buy 20 things of toilet paper <laughs> because you are in a season where your your emotions are heightened, you know, you're a little bit nervous, you're a little mm -hmm. scared, you know, and be super vocal with the Lord and just explain to him, like, literally just have a conversation with him and be like, I'm tripping out right now. Like, yeah. there's all this stuff that's happening. This is going on. This is going on. You know, I'm starting a new job or I'm doing this. I've never been in this position in my life before. Mm -hmm. And just be vocal and, and give yourself grace because we all are kind of spiraling. I don't want to say spiraling out of control, but we all have had moments where we're just like, you know, yeah. what's happening right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And I think at the end of that is give yourself grace, but then always become rooted in God, you know, again, and know, like, at the end of the day, like, I'll give myself this time, or I'll give myself maybe this week, or two weeks, or a month yeah. to be all over the place, but then I got to get it back together, yeah. and stay rooted, and, you know, keep the faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amen. For our high school students, what does trusting God and keeping faith look like as you're going into this new semester that's very different? <laughs> um... I think going to this new semester with school and not really being able to go to school and 
have a peer-to-peer type of conversation and action. A lot of people are really used to being able to communicate and have some type of connection with the teacher, especially when you can raise your hand. They'll come up to you and privately talk mm-hmm. to you. I think that's one thing people will really, really miss. I know I will miss it, but knowing that if you like put a whole bunch of trust in God, knowing that this whole test that we're going through to show our faith, it just takes you a lot of time to think about just absorb around yourself and the people around you. You can't really have too much mind saying, oh, something bad is going to happen. Oh, my family, mm-hmm. they're dying off. There's no more hope. There's still hope. There's a whole yeah, bunch yeah. of hope. Yeah. You just have to have faith in it and believe in it because God is always there. He's the one true God that you can never lean off of. He's going to forgive you even though you may forget him and say, oh, I hate you. Even though he's like, oh, you say you hate me, but I love you the same. So you need me. I'm here. So I'm the tr- having trust in God is just like a one true powerful thing you should have during this whole school thing. Mm-hmm. You may hate what's going on, but I mean, it's, we're going to make it through it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a time to be thankful for everything that school has offered us. Yeah. Just I will never complain about going to school ever again. (laughs) I'm surprised how much I hate sitting at home, having to do work online, having to make sure my teachers get it instead of just turning it in. And, And I think that just, that just shows me how much I have to be thankful for in school and out of school. And I think, God is going to help me through this school year because it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's just going to be crazy. But as long as you and I have faith in God, I think even though it's going to be madness, he's going to have us through the madness. I think that's uh, well said, Taylor, because I think in in a time like what we're experiencing today, uh, there's a lot of fear being spewed out via social media or just school or whatever. There's a lot of uncertainty, and we fear what we don't know a lot of times because we can't see over that hill. We can't see past this day, and we can't see past tomorrow. So the only thing we're concerned about is what's going to happen if whatever doesn't happen. You know, We're always trying to pose a question, and I think it really boils down to us really trying to control that world mm-hmm. instead of letting, allowing God to really uh, hold the reins in our life. Because if we be honest, we will always say, oh, God is in control, but I got this over here right, right. in our heart. You know, Whether we know we're saying that or not, uh, whether it's, oh, I get to spend time with my friends, I get to turn in my paperwork when I want to. I get to go to this job, or I get to you know, have whatever interactions to escape my reality anytime I want to. And now that's been stripped away from us during this pandemic. Now we're kind of at home just along with our thoughts. Mm-hmm. Sometimes our thoughts can be really scary. You know, right now, you know, maybe high schoolers are, what am I going to do without sports? Some people are only dependent on sports to get into college. Yeah. What am I going to do if I can't perform well via online classes? Mm-hmm. These are real fears that some young kids may be having and uh, that, you know, a few people have called me about. Uh, maybe we're in college and maybe we don't know, maybe we can't go off to the, sco- the college they gave us the full ride. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, maybe we can't go off to wherever we wanted to go because of COVID. Uh, and now these are put unnecessary fears in our heart. And now where we say we want to trust God, we may not trust God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the world will constantly tell us, hey, uh, do what you have to do to secure your safe place. Mm-hmm. Right. So I would ask for the kids in the room and the young adults, what would be your safe place? And what are you trying to secure outside of God? Let's expose it and then let's um, see what God is trying to bring us to and how we're trying to do. So what are, what are some safe places that we're trying to control, try to keep to ourselves, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody? When you say safe place, like, can you expound on that? So. All right, so, yeah, so a safe place for me, I would say I can be a definitely a perfectionist sometimes. So for me, if I don't start this music project, I won't have to perfect it. Mm-hmm. That's a safe place for me. For me is when I know my kids in the room sleep or when I know they're not at school, I don't have to worry about them getting COVID. Mm -hmm. That's a safe place for me. But really, 
they should be able to go to school if that's what is required of them. I should be able to go start this project because it does, if my anxiety may be too high, oh, I'm getting worked up because I can't control what is not controllable. Um, I don't. I'm I'm missing out um, on my other job right now because a lot of places are closed down. People are not having weddings. People are not planning events, and so I lost a good portion of my income. And so now I'm like, okay, Lord, what am I do? That that is a safe place for me. Mm-hmm. I don't have the money that I can build up for the past four or five months mm-hmm. that I would have for the security of my kids. Mm-hmm. That's a safe place for me. So for me, it starts as, oh, Lord, I don't have X, Y, Z. And then I bring myself back with the thought, okay, Lord, you are a provider, right? God, you really, like, I can't be a better father to my son than God can. Mm-hmm. So why am I worried about my fatherhood, me being able to take care of my son when I know God is in control, mm-hmm. right? So the irrational thought would be, I don't have enough to secure my kids. But really, God is all the security I need. So my safe place is my thoughts thinking I'm in control of taking care of it. Right? My safe place is already being challenged. Right? The security in God is I can rest. Because that's what he calls us to at the end of the day. He calls us to this rest in our heart to say, hey, whether you have this or not, I have it. So what are, what are those things for you? You know, like uh, I think Tiana mentioned, you know, not being able to interact in, in school. That may be a safe place for you. That may be your outlet. So what are those things, let's think about it, what are those things that are safe places for us or uh, things that we try to control that we may not have control of today? Attempting to control the uncontrollable in itself can be a safe place. Uh, uh, Like Natalie mentioned earlier about uh, timing, everything happens in God's timing, but attempting to force the time because you feel like your way is better or maybe more efficient than what you don't know yeah. which is a natural human reaction but uh definitely in itself that can that can be an example of a, of, of a safe place mm-hmm. is attempting to control the uncontrollable yeah um, i'll say for me like um i'm definitely a perfectionist and i'm a planner yeah. like <laughs> i have like this humongous planner that I just bought for like teaching or whatever like that's just that's who I am that's yeah. me naturally so um not being able to know what's coming down the line like when things in my planner aren't happening mm-hmm. the way they're supposed to be happening like I didn't get my graduation yeah that was like crazy to me yeah. me starting my first year and not having students yeah it's crazy to me you know right. so like I kind of get myself worked up when things don't go the way that I want them to go. So that's mm-hmm. definitely a safe place for me. And then also the uncertainty, you know, like, you know, me and him are planning a wedding. Well, you know, <laughs> that's like, that's, that's really uncertain right now yeah. because it's just like, of course we're going to get married, but like, this is something you think about mm-hmm. all your life, yep. getting yeah. married, having your wedding, having all of that. And it's just like, you know, not being in control and then having to realize I've had to realize before that I'm not in control mm-hmm. because I can literally work myself up to the place where like it's not going the way that I want it to go. But now being in a season where literally nothing is going how you <laughs> want it to go, yeah. everything is changing day by day. And I'm, I'm starting to have to force myself to learn how to be a go with the flow type of person. Mm-hmm. I am not a go with the flow type of person <laughs> at all. Like I need to know. Okay, you say we got to do this at this time, and yeah. we got to be here, and yeah. and that doesn't work for me. So now having to like rely a hundred percent on God's timing, yeah, yeah. you know, and realizing like you don't control anything. You think yeah. you control stuff, but you don't control nothing. Yeah. Like, and so I think that's definitely a safe place for me. And then also being willing. Um, I don't like to make mistakes, and in this time, uh, yeah. in this season. Yeah. There are a lot of mistakes that are kind of being made or that are being open, like, you know, and so that's another thing is like not being perfect and Mm -hmm. having to realize you're not perfect. You know, you're going to make mistakes, especially even going into like I was saying when I first year teaching that in itself is a task. But then going into it in this season, you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, but now I feel like those mistakes are going to be amplified <laughs> because, like, we're in the midst of, you know, parents are confused, yeah. teachers are confused, students are confused. And so I think mm-hmm. those are the two things that I'm really trying to, like, work on. Like, that's just, in this season, it's going to be 
very interesting. Uh, yeah. Very yeah. interesting season that we all find ourselves in. Indeed. I would say um, definitely uh, just across the globe, nobody can say they have the blueprint for this time. Right? Mm -hmm. Nobody can say, oh, I got to figure it out because this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's uh, never happened. You know, it hasn't happened in our lifetime at all. And so for essentially the world to be shut down for weeks, toilet paper gone. Y'all took all the toilet paper. <laughs> and we didn't have none. I had no Lysol. I have not bought Lysol this entire time. <laughs> They're not even making it to like 20 Yo, like, like, haven't even bought Lysol yeah. this whole time we've been on quarantine. Yeah, so for, you know, the German folks out there, that is anxiety for them, you know. So, uh, yeah. So I got another question. How does the world tell you as young people to respond to this pandemic or respond to not going to school or maybe going to school in a different light? How, what are the people saying to you to try to ease the tension mm -hmm. or ease your mind? Mm -hmm. so, the world wants you to be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And in all actuality, I think now more than ever is the time to, like we said, be earnest in our faith in God. But even moreover, I think this is the time for hard work and, yeah. and mm -hmm. even more dedication yeah. than than anything. Uh, I think the world tells us now, you know, you can sit at home and get, you know, government money and this, that, and the third is just, you know, the Bible, the Bible has, you know, uh, lessons and, and morals that, I mean, you don't work, you don't eat, it's just, yeah, yeah. you don't want this time to allow you to be lazy for when things clear up yeah. and then it's, you know. Absolutely. It's interesting, even though we live in this big world, it just doesn't tell us one thing. There's multiple people or things trying to tell you one thing, and you're wondering which one is the right thing to tell you, because right. I get both sides as a student and my grandmother as a teacher, and that her job, because she has to go back to school in person, most of the time they're just telling her, you're going to have to fight through it, mm -hmm. even though we have the tools mm -hmm. that we need. We have the tools to give you to make sure that you're safe, but we're just not going to give you all of them. We're mm -hmm. only going to give you portion. a yeah. portion of it. And I see her coming home. I see her stress, complaining about students who won't wear masks, complaining about teachers who don't try and do anything, complaining that her classroom is so small and yet she's still getting 25 students a day and the whole time everyone's just telling her fight through it it's going to be okay you're going to be okay even if you do get sick it may not be that serious mm -hmm. for you yeah. but i'm glad that i don't have to go to school at least that i'm glad in the sense of i don't have to go to school and bring it home to her because again she's 57 years old I'm not, I'm not certain if she's gonna be here if she catches it. Yeah. So the world tells her that she just needs to fight while some parts of the world are telling you to just stay home, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about other people for right now. Mm -hmm. Worry about yourself, worry if you're going to get it, make sure that you're safe. Mm -hmm. Right. But I think God just wants us to make sure everyone is okay. He wants us to check up on people, check mm -hmm. up, are you okay? Is Are you going through something? I always try and text at least two of my friends a day mm -hmm. to make sure that they're still alive, one, mm -hmm. and uh, still doing well, because I have a lot of friends that go through a lot of things, and I'm usually the outlet. Just I'm usually just there saying, just talk to me. I, I won't say anything, but even though a lot of people don't really ask me, are you okay? I'm totally fine with that mm -hmm. because I always want to know if other people are okay first. Mm -hmm. I've always thought about other people first. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's, That's good. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I would say um, during this pandemic, I think one thing that the world would tell us is, you know, like Taylor said, hey, be selfish. It's me and mine. Mm -hmm. God calls us to do a different thing. He says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. When I got to ask self a question, when I want self walking around without a mask on, 
that could potentially harm me, right? If, if I was the other person. So if we're to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, should we walk around without a mask if we're trying to protect them as well as us? Just a question, just a nugget. Anyway. Um, Speak on it. So like we keep saying, there are a lot of changes happening. A lot of things are different for some of us and some of us, our jobs, and definitely our schools will not look the same. So what specific concerns or fears do you have going into this school year or work year? <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of uncertainty, like uh, learning from home. Some some people have to go back to school, so like they're gonna be scared and like uh, like getting COVID because not everyone's gonna obey the rules, not of um, wearing masks and things. Yeah. So um, I I I worry about them, I guess, because mm -hmm. like they are like the ones being exposed. Because mm -hmm. not all the school systems decided to go back and some like stay in it. So I guess I'm grateful for me because I'm staying in, but I'm also like worried about sports because a lot of people depend on sports and mm -hmm. it's kind of a really big thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you get credits from like doing sports. So um, I feel like that's going to affect a lot of people. Even uh, I actually have two conflicting fears. One fear is that we don't go back this year and that's going to be really sad because yeah. At least at my school, there's a lot of stuff going on 10th grade and that I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to be a part of a lot of stuff fourth quarter freshman year, but canceled. But another fear is if we do go back and if we go back too early, mm -hmm. how is that going to affect me? Am I going to get sick? Am I going to? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably the one thing that keeps me up at night these days. Like if we do go back early, if we do go back second quarter are we going to do it right because we're just students we don't have any control over mainly anything so it's all up into people we barely know, we barely know's hands mm -hmm. and uh i think that's not just for students that's just for any average person yeah we don't have control over much it's all up to the people up top mm -hmm. and uh I feel for those people too because they have a lot of pressure on them. Because yeah. while we're wondering when are we going to go back, they're wondering are we going to make the right move. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Timmy said, sports is definitely going to be something yeah. missed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss all of the extracurricular activities like mm -hmm. student government. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to miss drama. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to miss drama. That was like the one thing I love doing after school. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's sad, but on one hand, I do want everyone to be safe. I want to know that when we go back, mm -hmm. everyone is still going to be here. Yeah. Everyone I've seen. No teacher gone, no principal, no student. And uh, yeah. All we can do is hope and pray. Yeah. All right, so Taylor, with that being said, I would like to know what should the viewpoint of the believer be uh, during this time in the pandemic? Because there are so many uncertain things. So we know what the world has called us to do or told us to do, rather. Uh, what should our perspective be as the believer? And how do we impact the people who uh, feel the way they feel about this time? Um, I feel like this season we're in is an opportunity for us to like reach out because a lot of people are scared or worried, anxious, a lot of things are going on. And I think like we as believers should like try to reach out to them and say like God's got your back. You can like rest in Jesus mm -hmm. knowing that mm -hmm. everything's going to be okay because mm -hmm. there is a lot of things going on and I feel like it's yeah. an opportunity to bring people to Christ. That's good to me. Yeah. That's real good. I like that. When Taylor mentioned leaders, I think we have to remember to be compassionate to our mm -hmm. teachers and our leaders as well yeah. because they don't know. And it's really easily easy to kind of step back and point your finger and be like, why would you do this and why would you do that? But being compassionate towards them as well, we're all human at the end of the day and we're really trusting in God. And we're hoping that those people are trusting in God as well. But we want to know that whatever the decision is, God is still going to supersede that and, you know, care for us and provide for us. But just being kind to people who are really wrestling 
with decisions. Church leaders, pastors, everybody, you know, just praying for leaders because I can kind of go home and go in my bubble and really not think about, you know, what I have to tell 500 plus people or what I have to yeah. tell thousands of students. I don't have to think about that. Yeah, um, but sure. to think about that, you know, that would just be another thing on top of keeping your own family safe. So yeah. being kind and compassionate towards like the decision makers is important in my yeah. opinion. For sure. Uh, also being sure not to operate out of fear. Uh, you know, yeah. the Bible says the Lord has given us a power of love. Uh, uh, the Lord is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So, you know, given today's circumstances, it's very easy to be fearful. And for you to be facing a global pandemic and for someone to just tell you, hey, don't worry. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, not, it's not something that's easy. It's not something you do overnight. It's an everyday thing that you have to make the decision that you're going to just allow God to be sovereign over your life today and forever. So yeah. when we say, you know, don't worry or put your trust in God, it's not something that you can do today and tomorrow you won't be worried. Tomorrow mm -hmm. could be scarier than today. But I mean, mm -hmm. like you, like I said, you just have to make that decision day to day to where's your, where's your faith going to lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my mom always says, has a saying, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. So I know you said earlier, We've never experienced in our lifetime a global right. pandemic, but this things like this of this nature have happened before. There have been times, I mean, we can go back to biblical times, like mm -hmm. the children of Israel were enslaved for hundreds of years, but then they were delivered, yeah. you know, and we can go back and look at God's word and he does not lie to us, mm -hmm. right. you know, um, we won't be in this season for long because it's a season, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and seasons change. We're in a season, we're in a a weird season, mm -hmm. you know, um, but seasons change and God promised us that he would never leave us or forsake mm -hmm. us. And we mm -hmm. just have to hold true to that and believe that. And like you said, it, it is hard. It's a day by, it's not even a day by day thing. It's a minute by minute thing. Yeah. Cause we have cell phones in our pockets that send us, send us notifications like every this. Second. Every five seconds is something different. And yeah. so it literally is a second by second thing. Mm -hmm. We just have to remember you know, even in the midst of that, that God will not leave us. He will not forsake us. He promised to take care of us at the end of the day. And that's where we have to keep our trust and our faith in that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad you said that because mm -hmm. that is absolutely the point that we're going to end on today. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a passage in 1 Samuel uh, 17, uh, verse 34, where it talks about David, how he responded during the time of uh, uncertainty for people. This is right before uh, the battle with uh, Goliath. And at the time, you know, Goliath basically called all the people out from Israel. He was like, hey, send me your baddest one, and I'm going to take them down. Mm -hmm. And so all the men were afraid. They were, they were scared. They were uncertain. And they never made a move because of what the enemy told them. Mm -hmm. right? So it literally stifled a whole army to not make a move to go into battle. When they forgot. So God always does things that are unorthodox with people who are not normally uh, mm -hmm. to fit the role that we assume, right? Mm -hmm. So when in this in this passage, uh, David hears about the challenge, mm -hmm. right? And David's like, oh, who is challenging the, the living God? Right. Who has the authority or the audacity to challenge the living God? And I think that's the attitude we should take during this pandemic. Not, oh my God, there's a giant over there. I can't believe it. You know, literally trained soldiers for Israel was like, hey, man, the king says it's a great reward if, if you take him out. Like, they're questioning, you know. But David is more so like, hey, I don't care what it is. My God delivered me from the lion's mouth. He mm -hmm. delivered me from the bear. It didn't matter what the challenge was. It didn't matter how big he was. The thought that we should believe and the things that we should hold strong to every day is we serve the living God. So it doesn't matter COVID, it don't matter. School starting or not, whatever the thing is, and no matter, if, even if the weapon forms, it does not matter. David literally walked into battle with a slingshot and some rocks. Mm -hmm. Not the typical sword and tunic and spear and, and, and whatever, javelin. It wasn't none of that. And so the soldier was like, yo, who is this little person walking into battle that's not even well equipped like we would be? Because God never does things that we expect him to do in the time that we expect him to do it. So I think the same mindset should be taken during this time 
where people, you know, bills that need to be paid, food is not uh, plentiful for some, job security is not there, school is up in the air, COVID is happening, people and family may be losing people because of COVID or other things. Mm -hmm. Whatever the thing is, whatever the giant is, whatever the battle is, you can believe that the Lord God is faithful and just to be there just for you. We serve the living God. So you can literally hold strong to that and believe that. That's it. Like, we don't have to... David didn't even say he trusted in himself. He said, the Lord is going to deliver my enemy into my hand. And I will cut his head off. And did just that. And dropped the mic and walked off. So I believe that's the attitude that we should have towards anything that comes against God's people. Uh, instead of, you know, it's easy to get caught up because, you know, the more you talk around the company of the soldiers, it's like, oh man, he big, you know, you, and everybody's conversation will wear down your faith because of what people are saying. Mm -hmm. And even great King Saul was like, oh man, you going to do what? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think you should do that, but I'm going to dress you for battle. Mm -hmm. How was the man who didn't believe you going to do something going to dress you for the battle? Mm -hmm. David said, no, my God got me. And I believe that's the same attitude that we can have yeah. during this season and during this time. And for, for the rest of our lives, really. Right. That is the thought that we should have. The Lord has our back, and we can put all of our trust and wait on that. Nowadays, a lot of people, I'm not sure what word to use exactly, but underestimate God. Because, mm -hmm. like, in the Bible, you see, he's pouring the seas. Like, why can't God do that today? But he says also that I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Amen. I feel like, yeah, we should, like, put our hope in God and not try to always do things our own way. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's good. Uh, that just reminded me of something. My friend, I was calling my friend Tech on him one day, and one thing he said interestingly, he said Christians have a lot of patience because this plan is long and extensive, mm -hmm. and we don't know what's coming up. And uh, I didn't know how to respond to that because then thinking about it, I'm like, it's not that we have patience; it's that we have hope; mm -hmm. it's that we have faith that we know something good is going to come out of this. Because even though it looks crazy, there's something good in all crazy things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's definitely going to be different good things even in this. And that's kind of a part of our perspective as Christians is being able to see through all of the confusion to still find the blessings, to still see God providing for us, even in this season. And so we will get into those as our conversation continues over yes. the next few weeks. We want to look more at this perspective. And so yes. thank you all for sharing with us tonight here. Thank, thank you for you. sharing with us at home or wherever thank you. you are. Um, we hope that you enjoyed this first part. Please like, Give us your feedback, send us your questions, send yes. us your comments. We would really, really appreciate that. Amen. <laughs> All right, so it's been a great night, and we uh, just had many things to discuss. And as we continue these conversations uh, in the next episode, uh, right now we're just going to go out in prayer so uh, all heads bow. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God. We just want to honor you for uh, just everything that you're doing in our life, God. Lord, we want to have the heart of David in this season, God. We want to just uh, look at all things, all things that will make us anxious or have anxiety about, God. We want to look at the things that we're scared of and we may have fear. We want to look at the things that we want to try to control, God, and give them all back to you, God. We want to be able to say, Lord, we can rest in you and trust because we know that you are faithful. We know that you are true. And we know that we can put anything that we have in our hearts uh, in your hands and it will be okay. So, Lord, uh, we just want to ask that you uh, reach out to your people in their heart, God. We ask that you just touch each and every family member that's watching this, God, and their family members, God. So, and let them know that they don't have to be insecure or, or uncertain about this time, God, but they can put all of their weight in their mind and in their heart and their spirit, God. Just We can leave everything on you. So, Lord, we love you and we thank you, God. And as we uh, go out into the world or on social media, God, we ask that uh, we could just be bold enough to proclaim your glory, your gospel, and bring more people back to you in whatever way you want us to, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, if you like the content, uh, subscribe, like, hit that like button at the bottom, and uh, show the generation out. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs>